I'm Alex Davis, aka AJ. Uh, it's a topic that's very spoken about today in, in society, uh, not just in the world of, of sport. If we're talking about male mental resilience, like the man of the house, that title, people have always put that to the, to the father figure of a home and, and men are expected to kind of excel and we've put a lot of um, weight on those men's shoulders. And I think it's important for us to realise that uh, a strong, uh, emotionally available man who's willing to sort of show his vulnerability under pressure when things are tough is really important and the more we can do to to normalize these men and make them into positive role models which people are starting to do with breaking down those stereotypes it's only going to benefit sort of the next generation but it's in our hands to as the current sort of aspiring young men to to look forward and and be good role models but it's a really important topic because our mental health is just as important as our physical health. I think it has a direct correlation with one another, so if we can get them to, to work well together, then it's only going to create better, stronger, more healthy, enjoyable human beings for the world to be a part of. So the current circumstances of the world, I guess, the biggest thing that's probably affecting people's mental health is the separation from, from loved ones and close, close family members and friends. So. For me, that's been the hardest thing I've found, is just having that separation, um, not being able to freely see people that I care about, and also it's that physical contact. Most people love giving one another and people close to them hugs and, and sharing that connection. So for me, it's that, what's what I've found tough is a detachment from the people around me, close to me, who I re who would be used to seeing regularly and, and I guess sharing a physical contact and emotions with. Yeah. He hasn't even been for a walk yet as well. <laughs> Snoring away. I think um, naturally through the influence of, of my dad, he fitted that, that mould of that kind of older generation man in terms of didn't really speak too much about his, his own emotions, probably wasn't that emotionally available and that probably um, well, not def definitely had an effect on me and I kind of was influenced by that. So in 2015, November, well, two years prior to that, my dad was diagnosed with leukaemia. Over the next two years, was living with cancer um, and then sadly died in November 2015. And I think automatically I kind of switched um, to protecting myself and trying to protect the people around me by not showing my emotions and, and being very closed book and not sharing enough. And so that led me down a route of bottling things up as people talk about hiding how I really felt. Um, and that started to have quite a damaging effect on my mental health. I was losing motivation towards the thing that I loved, which was rugby. I was probably upsetting and hurting people close to me, like my, my, my family and, and close friends, because I, I, I fell out of love with even socialising, just being around people. And, and that was as a result of my decision to not be open about how I was feeling. Um, and so for me, that was kind of the 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 spark that led me on this kind of journey um, alongside a number of long-term injuries, one surrounding the Rio 2016 Olympics where I dislocated my ankle just two days before competition and then had to watch the team go on to win a silver medal, which was uh, fun. If you want, I don't know how you want to describe it, but uh, no, it was so, all these things have been a massive learning journey for me. I mean, particularly the stuff around my dad's death for me, that was, and still is something that I'm having to learn to live with. And, at times feel very comfortable talking about it and other times it's it's still a really hard subject but I've learned a lot being able to give people space to speak so if you know someone's having a hard time or they've experienced a setback if you ask they're actually the people who are suffering are often ask are often looking for outlets if we as their support network are willing to to ask those kind of awkward questions for us surrounding these topics, then it's only gonna make them feel more comfortable, allow them to, to let go of some of the pain or the, the, the feelings they've got um, attached to, to whatever it may be, whether it's grief, injury, job loss in the current climate, things like that. Um, so I think it's really important that we create these safe spaces for people. And these are lessons that I've learned through my own experiences and my own sufferings. 
So in a way, I'm kind of grateful for them because it's taught me a lot about how to kind of live a better life and be a better role model for the people close to me and also improve, I guess, my own well-being. Yeah, so my motivation definitely took a dive, like it was pretty low um, for a number of years, I'd say. I fell out of love with, with training, with rugby. My dad had, was massively associated with that. He was, as for most young aspiring rugby players, you have that person you look up to. And he was my coach up until the age of 17 and we shared a lot of love for the game. And so kind of lose, losing that role model or that permanent figure that I could speak to was really difficult. So he became a massive part of what I like to call, and a lot of people refer to as my why. That meant I could use him as my motivating factor. I had this vision that I was making him proud whenever I stepped out on the pitch to play for England or, or go to Olympic Games. And for me, that was really powerful. But as time went on, I started to, I guess, learn to live with his, his death and everything that was associated with it. I had to realise that although I still love my dad and I had this powerful relationship with him my why was having to start of, sort of shift because I realized that other things in my life needed to to become motivating for me to to continue and strive to be the, one of the best rugby players in the world and so for me it was about going on a bit of a journey discovery finding out what works for me and one of the things I reverted back to was my love for rugby the enjoyment that's one of the main reasons why I started playing so that was really important for me finding out remembering why I love the game why I enjoy playing it and then also through my own experiences, how I can be a role model for the people around me, whether it's the young, the young academy players coming through, or whether it's even my peers, the guys older than me, my teammates, senior players, family members, friends, if I can show and be a good example to them, then for me, that's something that I'm proud of, not necessarily the success or the medals or the, the cup wins. It's more about how I display myself to the people around me and the, and the population watching from all around the world. Over the years, AJ's grown ridiculously. Okay, not grow physically, I was gonna say. <laughs> he's done all his growing. I guess as an emotional point of view, like he's come so far. He's come from like basically not talking about his emotions at all or kind of interacting with that kind of part of his mental health to being like so open and really aware of like how he's feeling. He's been helped by others, but he's realised himself, I think, that actually there's more strength in asking for help and being more open and honest about things that perhaps he didn't feel very natural. He didn't feel able to express or didn't feel like he, it, maybe he didn't feel it was the right thing to do. Maybe it was because he didn't want to burden me and his sister and all of that, I'm not sure. And in actual fact, I think probably he has brought that out in us now. He's kind of like turned into like a role model in that aspect and which I think is incredible. Um, I guess it's a bit weird for me because like in my eyes it's just like my older brother but then it is amazing like to see when you watch him you know talk to kids or talk to camera at the end of a game in World Series and he's being asked about something that's like really kind of personal and quite emotional and some people would find really hard to answer and he's able to just give this like very thought through answer to it and you know comes across incredibly well on camera I'm just really proud of it like it's amazing and I never actually thought that he would be able to get to that point where he can like openly speak about his emotions because it's so hard everyone struggles with it and yeah I guess I'm just really proud well um There may be other people who have experienced it in terms of like that guy questioning my physical makeup because it was like, well, it always has been for like a long time now, kind of one, an injury, six weeks going well, eight weeks, whatever it may be, another injury, etc., etc. Well, I started playing sevens 2014, tore my hamstring in February 2015, just before the Las Vegas sevens. November 2015, my dad died from leukemia. January 2016, ruptured syndesmosis in my left ankle, which resulted in ankle surgery. Got to the Olympic Games, dislocated my ankle, had surgery in my right ankle. 2017, 2017 actually was Alright, I think I can have to 2017 was alright for a little bit and then I broke my broke my hand, had surgery on my left hand. 
2018, right ankle ligaments again. Right knee injury, did morale lovely in my right knee 2018. January 2019, I had a shoulder surgery for my left shoulder AC joint, which put me out for 14 months, which had three surgeries on my left shoulder. And at the same time, I had surgery on my abdominal wall in June or July 2019. Um, so four surgeries throughout 2019, which was a rough year, which 14 months out of, out of rugby. Um, and then to the present day, um, I've just six weeks ago, just injured the um, MCL in my left knee, high grade two, but managed to avoid surgery. So yeah, not much. Though. Not much. I think I rattled them all off there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a number of things. Um, my first injury was pretty foreign to me. I, I hadn't experienced or been in a professional environment before, so it was all very new. And, and so I guess I automatically looked to see what other people were doing, because there was other guys rehabbing or going through similar experiences. And so I, I thought I would just kind of almost copy them. Um, but for me, I quickly realized that that wasn't the right way to do it. I mean, you can take ideas from people, but first and foremost, you need to find out what, what works best for you. And that's a little bit of trial and error figuring out things for yourself. It's not always going to be straightforward. Rehab or the road to success, people like to say, it isn't just a straight line from A to B. So find out what suits you, what suits your style, what you like, what you don't like. Try not to copy people too much. Ask questions, definitely, um, which will help, but find your own feet. And then also just, as I've kind of said, it's a little bit of trial and error. Things aren't just going to happen overnight. But once you've had those experiences, you can then use them to, to plan forward. Um, so you know next time, okay, that didn't work, but this did, I'm going to explore that some more. So have a bit of fun with it, try different things, and, yeah, and just see what happens. So one other thing for me was, I guess, so far my career has kind of been defined by injuries and setbacks. And although I don't necessarily want to be, or history to define me, um, one thing I've learned is um, the best thing to do is to speak about how you're feeling. Even if it's, even if it's that things are going great and you want to be, happy and you want to celebrate those things then then do it um, shout from the rooftops because people will be there to support you and want to see you want to see you succeed so don't be afraid of celebrating when things are going well but also um, understand that when things are times are tough um, there's people around you who are who want to support you and listen to you there's always people caring especially in a team environment you know you've got one pe particular people that you're close to who you can share with and be be open with so don't be afraid of, of going after that and, and setting an example for other people. No, def definitely not. I think um, I've managed to build up uh, strong habits from challenging myself when I'm in a, con in a conversation where people have asked me or how things are going and my kind of default answer in the past would have been yeah, everything's fine or I'm good. Whether, even if I am good, it's just being a bit more, just elaborating more on how I'm actually feeling, being a bit more of an open book and saying I'm good, like this is going well at the moment, my rehab's going well, um, but if things are, are not so good, kind of just taking the opportunity to say straight away like what's, what's happening. So I think challenging my defaults have been in the past, which, I, which are my safe space. I'm just getting myself out of my comfort zone for me has been something that's helped me build those habits. And it's even little things like, for example, it could be waking up and the first thing you do is making a bed. And, and now for me, if I see my bed unmade, like it automatically makes me switch. Okay, I've quickly got to do that. And I think you soon recognize what's, or you soon recognize if you've got out of your habits, but you can also, you, you know how quickly you're able to revert back to them. And for me, that's been something that I've learned on. It's just a, a process that we can go through. If we keep sort of ticking and edging away each day and making those small changes, it will, it will have a long-term effect. I'm a, I'm a laid back guy. I like to have fun and I'm pretty free flowing, spontaneous, but there's a few things in my life that I like to keep consistent because I know that if, if things are hard, there are things I can rely on to, to set me on my, on my way for a good day. Um, and one of the ways I like to start is having a, a cold shower. For me, it's a really good way to focus my mind. Um, I can control my breathing for a couple of minutes, which gets me into that sort of mindfulness headspace. And then also, the, I, I love the feeling of kind of the, the endorphin, the, the, the warm blood flow rush uh, once you get out and you get into a nice warm towel. But for me, it's a, it's a great way to start the day. A little bit different, but um, it gets me prepped for, for the day ahead. 
for me, um, I love drinking coffee, not any time of the day, but most of the day. Um, it's, it's a nice way to start. It's something I look forward to in the morning, coming downstairs and going through a little bit of a process, like the grinding of the beans, boiling the kettle, the smell of the coffee as it brews. Uh, so again, that's something that I can really focus on each step by step. It allows me to, to quickly focus on, on something that's going on in my day before I kind of switch on to I don't know whether it be rehab or aimlessly flicking on my social media, which I do from now and then, like all of us. And then also alongside that, I love a bowl of porridge, um, which is my which is my oats. And for me, when I'm often eating them, I, I try and think of what I like to call my daily oats, which is a little um, a quote, maybe a little bit inspiring that I found the next day or I've found in the last couple of weeks. Something that's resonated with me from a book, from social media, from the radio, from newspaper, whatever it might be, but it just allows me to to get my mind thinking from a different perspective and often be quite motivating towards whatever state of mind I'm in at the moment. One of my favourites is our beliefs are the stories we tell ourselves and that's something I think about a lot and how we can change our mindset if we're telling ourselves that we're rubbish at going on a run or rubbish at cooking. You're only going to believe that more and more if you don't try it. Can you hear? <laughs> routine has been relatively disrupted by what we can and can't do as a, as a result of the coronavirus but I've got a pretty pretty good routine so after after breakfast I'll head to the gym to focus on my rehab I've got a plan in place and for me that's a good focus not just to to be able to get better in terms of getting stronger in my upper body but really focusing my mind and my attention on on the injury at the moment which is my MCL and my left knee and so for me that's a nice way or it's a good outlet for me to, to get some enjoyment as a professional rugby player. I love exercising and, and performing so having that outlet of, of physical activity for me is really important. It's something that really helped my uh, positive mindset I guess throughout the lockdowns and I've learned from it that you can take that opportunity, see it as a, a great space to, to, to get better in other ways, maybe whether it be reset the mind, switch off from the, the pressure of performance and, and focus in on, on other areas of the body that might be lacking a little bit of attention. So you can really use that as an opportunity to get better in all sorts of facets, whether it be um, your headspace, your leg work, um, your physical strength. Um, it's, yeah, it's always a great opportunity to get better and challenge yourself. For me, it's really important to have something um, or other avenues of enjoyment away from my sort of rehab physical routine. Um, it's very easy to get quite sort of bogged down and bored by it because often it's the same exercises or the same um, process each day. So for me, it's really important to have other, other things that I enjoy to do or help me switch off. One of those things is I challenge myself to read 10 pages a day, which doesn't sound very lot, but for me, I'm it's not particularly good or a fast reader and I've got about 10 books on the go, I get quite lost between what content I'm reading. So for me, it's a good way just to, to escape what's going on, uh, find a nice quiet space in the house and just focus in on my book for sort of 10 minutes, 20 minutes, however long it might take me to read those 10 pages and try and digest some of the information I'm taking on. Often the rehab process, obviously, it's really important to have little goals that you can, can look forward to, to, to achieve and, and tick off, which will, which will help you achieve that longer term goal. And, and when you get them, you can celebrate them. So for me, it's really important to set those goals, um, whether it be getting out of the brace for my knee, being able to, to squat my body weight again, or in six weeks time, make sure I'm back on feet running. Because um, I know in, in the long term, that's going to get me back to being full fit and ready to perform again on a rugby pitch. Alongside that, just one other avenue I love, I love doing is, is listening to music. For me, it's, it's a massive place of enjoyment for me, whether it's first thing I do in the morning when I'm making coffee, I put some music on, or going to the gym, make sure I've got a good playlist lined up. It just gets me in the mood, gives me a bit of spirit, and I can um, try and uh, show some dodgy moves. But yeah, it's, for, for me, it's, it's a wicked outlet of, um, of enjoyment for me. Part of what helps me focus and understand what's going on in my, in my life at the moment is, is keeping a gratitude diary, um, something I often do later in the day once I've been able to kind of reflect on what's happened. But if I think of something at that moment in time that really sticks out that I'm, I'm grateful for, then I'll note it down. It just allows me to, to remember that despite my circumstances, being, being injured long term or the death of my dad, for example, there's still things that I can remember that I'm really happy for in my life, whether it be friends, the fact that I've got running water in my house, uh, anything like that. So despite my circumstances, there's always little silver linings to be had. Good boy.
things that, that help me and one of those things is, is getting out into nature and kind of being present, fi fi finding myself quite grounded. I like to go on long walks with the dog. Again, that's another chance for me to maybe listen to some music. Um, but if I don't listen to some music, I'll, I'll make sure I'm very present, mindful of the space around me, the sounds of the water, the leaves, the wind, the weather, whatever it might be. And, and that kind of lends itself into what I try and have a mindset in terms of like the curious, curiosity of a child or a baby. So you've got to imagine that you're seeing the leaves blowing in the wind for the first time and how amazing it is. And it just allows you to kind of escape to a, to a different place that you might not necessarily go to usually if you think you've just been on that same walk all the time. There's always something different or unique to explore with your mind. So for me, that's really important is getting out into nature, with the dog Archie, he's usually off chasing squirrels or trying to swim in the water, but for me it's just a great way to, ex to escape the world and kind of the, the routine that I've been going through. So I felt like I was the same stuff in my throat as well. Oh, it can't swim. You stuck on carrier. <laughs> 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 Oh dear me. Uh, a passion of mine is, is cooking. For me, I love to be able to switch off and focus on, on the good food. Uh, obviously nutrition is a really important part of professional sport, but I love to, to be able to, to make, some, make some good food. Most of the time I, I like to think it tastes pretty good. Um, my mum seems to agree. So for me, it's a great way to switch off at the end of the day um, or even at the start of the day, focusing in on the, the process and, and the things you're putting together. It's, it's a passion of mine and something that I know, despite whatever might have happened that day, if I've had a bad day, it's gonna give me some, some level of enjoyment. For me, it's been vital not just in the current climate, but over the kind of the last five to six years, my whole time in professional sport. My teammates are obviously on that emotional highs and lows kind of roller coaster the whole time with success, loss, injury. Um, and they, so, they, so they share a lot of those experiences, but it's the people close to me, I guess even closer, my family and friends who, who kind of see the real emotional effects having in terms of um, sometimes feeling feeling quite low because having picked up another injury, but also being able to to share the the celebrations and the, the happiness that I, I get from winning or from overcoming a rehab challenge. So the, the support network for me is everything. It's my space. It's my it's where I feel comfortable. I don't let a lot of people in, but I know that the people that are in in, in my circle of of support, I trust them dearly, and I've got a great deal of love for them all. And, and so I'm very grateful always for their support and willingness to, to look after me and, and have my best interests at heart. So it's really important to find out who those people are, um, identify them and, and don't, be, don't be afraid of letting them know who they are and if they're part of it and how, they're, how important they are to you. So I recognise that as a professional sportsman, having a bit of an impact on social media, that we have a great platform to kind of influence change and affect other people's lives positively and so for me that's been really important that I kind of use that status to enhance other people's lives and one way I've gone about doing that is a number of sort of charity fundraising campaigns raised I reckon I don't know exactly but maybe close to £50,000 for various charities. Most recently during the first lockdown started up an Instagram hashtag called Shave Donate Nominate which raised over £26,000 for the NHS Charities Appeal. People shaved their heads, donated some money to, to the cause and then nominated some people to continue doing it with them. So there was a lot of bald people around but they weren't too fussed about it because the weather was nice. And then Movember, which is really important to me, fo big focus on men's health, uh, testicular cancer, prostate cancer, male suicide and mental health. So that's another, another cause that I'm I'm really passionate about and then finally with the with the sevens team I've managed to raise sort of between 15 and 20 thousand pounds for Macmillan Cancer and Blood Cancer UK. Again that's obviously something that my dad lived with blood cancer leukemia for a number of years or something that's really close to my heart and for me it's a great way to to show people that we are although we live in this privileged position of being a professional sportsman we can have a much greater impact on kind of society and, and use it for, for good and change. Looking towards the future, obviously, I guess first and foremost, trying to get fit from this current injury. And then bigger picture, now that Tokyo Olympics has been shifted to 2021, that's a big goal in terms of rugby. 
Um, but again, I just want to continue to use my my why of being a good role model and example for people close to me. I guess being a voice for for men's mental health and not only the, the, the damaging effects it can have, but what a positive change it can have on your life if you're able to speak up and be emotionally available to the people close to you. So that's really important for me. And then possibly some more fundraising ideas. I had one surrounding sort of starting in Bristol and because of the Sevens program has been split up, cycling to every single one of my teammates around the country, which was pretty ambitious seeing as I've only cycled about 50 miles in the day before and it was gonna accumulate close to eight or 900 miles in total. But it was going to be fun and I was excited about the challenge and it's, it's really important that we check in on everybody, um, on your mates, on your family when, when times are hard and you know people might be struggling. So for me the future looks bright. Um, obviously at the moment I'm pretty upset about being injured and the frustration surrounding that but um, I'm really positive about looking forward and, and having an open mindset to, to what could, could hold 2021 which I'm excited about. Three points I guess that stick out in my mind. I've spoken about it a lot already, but number one would probably be your support network, finding out who are the people close to you that you trust, who can show you that sort of compassion and, and have that empathy towards you. It's really important for me. I'm sure everyone, no matter how big or small it is, have, have people that they can rely on to be able to share how they're feeling, good or bad. And so for me, that would always be my number one thing to rely on if, if things aren't going well is just lean on them, ask questions, tell them how you're feeling. It's only going to help you in the long run, for sure. Secondly to that, finding what works for you in your daily routine, in your rehab process, whatever it might be, it's, it's all about you at the end of the day. You have to find out what suits you. So have a bit of fun with it, trial and error. Um, it's not going to be straightforward, but I think it's really important whether you, have a, you want to be someone that's more structured or whether you know that you're someone that just wants to have one or two things to focus on, but they're just they're little markers that you can rely on. So you know, right, today I'm going to do this. It's just going to set me on track for the day to, have, to be successful. Finally, uh, you've got to enjoy what you're doing. And so having quite a broad outlook on life, I think is really important. Having that mindset to, to explore and be open to opportunities reading books, listening to music, going on walks, cooking, whatever it might be, I think it's really important to have that open mindset and for me it's great to, to explore, have some fun and, and most importantly just enjoy what you do.